Hi guys, this is Nadia Hilker. I'm playing Magna on The Walking Dead, and you guys are listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and I'm sending you all my love. Bye! Hello, my name is Cassie McClincy. I play Lydia on The Walking Dead, and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Yeah! Hey there guys, I'm Callan McAuliffe and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, I'm Lindsley Register and I play Lara on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, this is Ross Marquand and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Awesome. <laughs> Survivors, welcome to episode 135 of the Walking Dead Talk Through. I'm LT. And I'm Kyle. Yay, Yay. it's us. <laughs> <laughs> LT is going to take point. <laughs> Yay. Well, hey, I've, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, this week, we will be covering the Walking Dead season 11, episode 12, titled The Lucky Ones. But first, we did get some feedback for the last episode, Season 11, Episode 11, Rogue Element. It did come from Emma from the UK. Hi guys, it's Emma here from the UK. Um, Just wanted to leave my feedback for Episode 11. I know I've missed the deadline now, but uh, I just thought I'd still send it anyway. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I really liked this episode. I give it an 8 out of 10. Um, my awesome source was all about, uh, Josh McDermott, uh, as Eugene. I thought his acting was amazing. Um, I have to confess, I often watch The Walking Dead with subtitles, um, just because sometimes there's a lot of, uh, sort of grumbling and whispering and I don't catch everything and particularly, um, Eugene's, uh, lines are so complex and his accent so thick. Um, so I had this on with the subtitles and, uh, I thought the, uh, the script for him was fantastic as usual. Um, I liked the kind of crime mystery feel sort of almost like a film noir feel to it at times. Um, Obviously, really, really sad. Um, my R source would be everything to do with Eugene and Stephanie slash Shearer. Um, you know, to start with, it was so happy. Key, uh, the key to his apartment being given to her and he was so cute with it all. Um, obviously, this is The Walking Dead, so that was never going to uh, work out as we might have all hoped. And obviously it didn't. Um, but Awesome Source also that Eugene wrote a novel, a sci-fi novel. I think that's fantastic. Um, but then obviously so sad that he, that he burned it. Oh, such a shame. Um, I would really like to have read that at some point. Um, other awesome source, um, the only mention of the apocalypse, I think I've heard, maybe I've not got that right, but I, I just feel like I've never heard it actually mentioned as an apocalypse before on the walking dead. I could be wrong, but, um, uh, I heard Lance Hornsby call it that. I thought it was uh, a really good uh, walker kill when Mercer sliced that walker's head in two. Um, and uh, and then obviously finding out at the end um, that the real Stephanie has, has come into Eugene's life was uh, interesting and it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Weak source. I wasn't particularly keen on the Connie uh, or the Carol um, side of things this week. It, I think it was all about Eugene. Um, I thought Connie's storyline, you know, what's she going after really here? She's reminding me a bit of Al in, in Fear the Walking Dead, just going after the story, going after the story. And, you know, that's never a, never a good thing when in a place like the Commonwealth, it's it's not going to end well for her, that I don't think. Um. My what source, I suppose, just, wow, finding out that Stephanie isn't Stephanie, um, that she's in cahoots with Hornsby, um, that it was all a lie. Um, just really sad, really sad for Eugene. Um, I, I, could, I knew uh, when he was staking out that place that that was Hornsby's silhouette, the 
dark shadow going into the building. I just knew it was him. Um, but yeah, just to sum up, really, Josh McDermott's acting, absolutely amazing in this episode. Couldn't take my eyes off him. Thought it was fantastic. Um, and yeah, looking forward to finding out more about the real Stephanie. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye. All right. Thank you so much for that, Emma. As we've said, send it on in. We don't care if it's a little late. We don't care if it's the next week. We love getting voicemails. And especially the fact that, you know, I, I'll say you're probably, that's our maybe our first UK voicemail <laughs> on The Walking Dead. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, just. Just to reiterate, yeah, I like um, I saw that you emailed that after the fa- you know we already recorded, so don't feel like you can't. Um, I know, like you know, I've told Renee uh, like the same thing, and so it's just like get that in, and you know, either or fa- you know voicemail or just even the written feedback. It's like we'll get it in, and you know, cover it. So, and and this is where I'll duck and say. Uh, giving giving our adherence to a strict schedule every week. <laughs> uh, Kyle and I have both had a lot of real life, and it's precluded recording several times. So, just go ahead and send it. Right, you, know, you may luck out <laughs> for sure. Oh goodness! Ah, thank you, Emma. I kind of came back around on this episode after you know we recorded um, and covered it because. You know, I was kind of like hard on Eugene and was like, oh, yeah, it was just not that interesting or whatever. And I was more interested in Connie and and like Carol's side of stuff. But, uh, you know, after watching it some more, it was and then also even just in, you know, this episode, it was kind of like, you know, it's like I, you know, I I, kind of came around, you know, it's like. Yeah, since since he's not here, I'll go ahead and say that I kind of put my Brian hat on and looking at last week's episode in light of this week's episode i could probably go a little higher i think i was in the 80s range and i could probably go nine ish now because these two episodes were hand in glove that to me the eugene storyline from last week and the eugene storyline from this week needed to be told together so this these two episodes will benefit from binging yeah yep 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 for sure um and plus you know it was his acting was great oh yeah i mean i i raved about i raised raved about uh, josh mcdermott last week and uh, i think that that was really one of his high points and i think he did a pretty good job this week yeah and i have to agree with the subtitles because like i mean obviously i'm like when i do my re i don't put subtitles on when it comes on because I'm usually watching with my husband and it's like, he's just not used to doing that. But then when right. I do my rewatch, obviously I'm like, I'm always, you know, putting subtitles on because I want to see exactly what they're saying. And it's funny because it is sometimes it's like hard to hear things. And we've been watching like Yellowstone and I almost wanted to turn subtitles on because like so many times, like half the stuff they were saying, it was just like all mumbled. And I don't know if like, I just don't have the best like sound system or whatever. I think it was pretty, it's pretty decent. I have separate speakers, but it was kind of like, I just go with it and be like, okay, he kind of said something. And I'm like, well, since she's not here, I will go ahead and credit uh, the lovely and long suffering Mrs. LT who has continually confirm the fact that being a uh, past middle-aged white male who has been in two occupations that involved a lot of loud noise that often I have to turn the TV up. So, <laughs> subtitles are nice. And as a juxtaposition for, for Emma, there's a couple of movies I watched that one of the actors had a real heavy Glaswegian accent. And so I was going, what, what do you say? <laughs> so sometimes it helps. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I didn't really have more to say. It's like you, uh, getting the not so like, you know, not known reveal that Stephanie wasn't Stephanie, you know, <laughs> I mean, right. it, was just, it was just nine that nice that it finally just like, they just did it. You know, they There's finally like, acknowledged the, the elephant in the room and said something. And so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So now we can get started with 
This week's episode, Season 11, Episode 12, titled The Lucky Ones. It was written by Vivian Say and directed by Tanya McKiernan. The description, according to ABC Plus, is Governor Pamela Milton tours Alexandria, Oceanside, and Hilltop. Eugene processes Max's story. So it goes right into our ratings. So what did you think, Kyle? I gave it because I really enjoyed this this week. And so I gave it a nine. Who's Deanna? <laughs> just, yeah. Yep. J- I just like the fact that like, I'll go into it. It's in my awesome yeah. sauce. <laughs> well, this week for me, especially with the little part at the end, I gave it nine out of 10. And everyone forgive me because I've got to do the voice. Say, Mr. Hornsby, what are we going to do this? What are we going to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Daryl. Try and take over the world. And if you don't watch Pinky in the Brain, good cartoon. You need to watch it. Yep. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. Was That's that, funny. You know, I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> it's uh, like, that- it's like, oh yeah, Lance. We know what you're up to now. Yep. <laughs> All right, and we did get some ratings from our listeners. First up is Dieta from Detroit, who says, I rate this episode 7 out of 10. Will the real Stephanie Max please stand up? And Glenn is from Toronto, gives it a 6 out of 10. Lucky comes with a price. Indeed. Renee from Atlanta gives it a 7 out of 10. That's right, Maggie. Don't fall for the okie doke. And two thumbs down. <laughs> And Emma from the UK, she gave it an 8 out of 10. Felt like a coherent episode following on from last week. Not the randomness we sometimes get. And all storylines coming together now. Yep, completely agree. Indeed. And so we got some feedback from, or a rating from Alma from Sacramento who says, Ooh-wee, this was a good episode. I give it a solid 9. Nice. I'm glad we're mostly all on board. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that means it's time for our awesome sauce. Awesome sauce! Okay. So again, we'll start off with Deanna from Detroit, who says, Maggie and all of her awesomeness, killing the walkers as only she can do. And Glenn from Toronto said, her awesome sauce was the various kills of the walkers were, as always, excellent, especially Maggie and Mercer. Yes, there were. So Emma from the UK says, finding out how many people are in the Commonwealth, 50,000. Now I want to know how big it is in area. Love to see a map. It was great to see Oceanside again. Had almost forgotten about them. Ezekiel getting his surgery. Hope all goes well, but worry about the debt that will be owed. (laughs) Yes, that will definitely come into play, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I have to agree, seeing Oceanside again, it's like, it's just kind of like they dropped off the map. I mean, we we know that they were there, so it was just good to yeah. see that they were still, you know, I mean, heck, I wouldn't want to leave there being by the ocean. <laughs> it would probably be great. Uh, and then next is Renee from Atlanta, and she says, Maggie's intuition kicking in and realizing those Commonwealth folks are not to be trusted. She reminds me of Rick and Michonne because they definitely would have picked up on those bad vibes real quick. And then she's like, shrug, shrug. Yeah, I think Maggie is kind of following in the footsteps of uh, Rick in the comics. So she's yeah. taking that role. And we have some from Alma from Sacramento who says the Stephanie issue is finally explained and all of our questions were answered. I also love that we got to see all three of our communities. We haven't seen Oceanside in a hell of long. My last awesome sauce, badass mofo Maggie. I love how she was handling walkers as the Milton Hornsby expedition rode up. Indeed so. So, Kyle. Well, I mean... I guess I'll just go through mine real quick and then we'll talk about it or whatever. Um, the one was kind of funny that Sebastian is an asshole is the consensus on both sides. <laughs> like yeah, every, everybody thinks he's an asshole. Yeah. And like, you know, it was funny. Like Pamela Milton was like saying at the, like to Max or whatever, it was just like, Oh, cut off his credit. You know, like that old, you know, 
kind of teach him for being, you know, whatever, uh, you know, spoiled brat or whatever it was. I'll take away his credit card. I know. It's still like, it's still, although I do think that we get to see a lot of, you know, kind of how Commonwealth, how they work, because then that goes into kind of my next awesome sauce. It was like the whole episode as a whole. And it was just like, like getting that insight into the Commonwealth and like those that run it. And, you know, it's like the, you know, Milton Hornsby, uh, just how it, it was, um, just in the sense of like, we got all this, like, you know, dialogue between them and then it got that or it gave me that Roman Empire civilization vibe and how mm-hmm. Pamela was talking about her empire, you know, quote, unquote. Um, and just talking about, like, the natural order was lost and it needs to be restored. And it made me feel like that she was, like, taking it that she- she like or the commonwealth is like going to civilize the common za survivors and it's almost like she's like looks down on them and you know there was all these like interesting interactions with like mercer and daryl whenever she she was touring um alexandria and it was almost kind of like 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 not, you know, I don't think it necessarily showed in his face or whatever, but he's like asking him questions about like, like what did you do before all this? And Daryl's like, it doesn't matter. It's like you know, it, like not to us anyway. You know, it's like the, you know, Milton, like was all these questions and whatever. It just seems like it, it's almost like it was like, did they like they don't understand, <laughs> or they chose not to understand, like because they've been living in their little you know the Commonwealth since the start, and right. you, you know, like and like what what people have had to do and like building these communities because she even then said something about, um, or being surprised that like Alexandria like like I think she was talking to Daryl and it was like, oh, it's like but it fell. And um, and he's like, well, well, we always, we, we, but we always brought it back. And she's like, it fell more than once. Like, well, yeah, like. <laughs> and and when she was talking to Daryl, it's she didn't understand that there wasn't like a person in charge. Yeah, that like a, she, yeah, she's very much into this. You know, somebody's got to be in charge. Who's in charge? And that's all they do is be in charge. That see the way that I got, I didn't get so much of a Roman Empire feel, but more of the old Three Musketeers movie that Pamela Milton is like the king that she's doesn't really know what's going on around her. And she only knows what's going on because of Hornsby, who's playing the Cardinal Richelieu role, Mm -hmm. that he's the one that's got his fingers in all the you know, in all the pies and his hands and all the cookie jars. And he's actually doing the dirty business of making the place run. And she thinks, you know, she's very detached from it. She thinks that she's, you know, she's the queen, she's in charge. And that's why she wants, you know, fancy dress balls and talks about, you know, know your place, know your role. And her, you know, things about, organization and position and i think hornsby is much more practical and i think he understands that his status is based on his ability to deliver and i'm thinking and like i said don't know i didn't see it in the comics but i'm sort of seeing the point where richelieu is going to make his bid for the throne because he's like i'm the one that did all this i'm the one that's making everything happen and especially there at the end when he had his little therapy session shooting walkers Mm -hmm. that i think that that basically laid out the rest of the cards that he had hidden from the scene in the plumber shop that he's running you know several sides against each other he's got this covert operation gathering intelligence and kind of keeping order he's working with milton to bring in other communities to you know add to the numbers to make it look like they're being all uh kind and generous 
but he's he's you know definitely got that dirty conniving side and he's he's acting his way into his appearance that we all thought he was a greasy two-faced you know ambulance chasing lawyer used car salesman but now we're kind of seeing that he actually is he's 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 got a lot more going on than just the you know the loud ties and the swoopy hairdo the thing that i was noticing was that the commonwealth you know i've said it's a bureaucracy and this episode to me just confirmed that you know like when mercer was talking he's like well i know my job and i know my place and i know my thing and i've got to do my job or they'll replace me and it's it's that bureaucrat mentality of, well, you know, you didn't fill out form two and you didn't sign your thing. So we can't, you know, we've got to push your claim back and well, you didn't agree to our terms, so we can't give you any more stuff. It just, we've, we've seen the communities with our heroes operate in a far more, uh, unified and benevolent sort of fashion. I mean, even, you know, even Alexandria back in the Deanna days, it was still not so much that she was in charge and she, she still did stuff and she coordinated things and she ran things, but she didn't run it aloofly as much. You know, she, she had her, she had her hand on the wheel and they, she actually did stuff. Um, everybody said it, it was cool to see Oceanside again. And what was funny is that Oceanside seemed to be doing pretty well in spite of things that, you know, there were people walking around, looked like they were, you know, doing pretty much what they did before. Yeah, they, they, they looked really like fine yeah so it makes me wonder just how much of an impact all the whisperer stuff i actually had on them i think that really we can say the hillside took it the hardest or hilltop took it the hardest and alexandria took it the next hardest and then oceanside looks like they kind of got a pass <laughs> um i thought it was pretty awesome to see aaron in realtor mode you know, he's like, oh, dress that up, fix that up. You know, we got to look good. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you know, arrange the books so it looks, you know, it looks good. And even though it seems like that whatever, however he's been dealing with Hornsby, it looked like there was a little tension there. Like Aaron maybe should have, was supposed to deliver the goods on Hilltop and he wasn't quite doing it. You know, makes me think there was some some backdoor dealing going on there. Yeah, or like less like you know, like Hornsby and Aaron were not communicating very clearly because it was Aaron seemed to be more like wanting to be impressing Pamela and being like, oh, here, look how like you know, hide all the bl- blemishes, right? But but not really understanding or knowing like you know, Lance was like, oh no, no, this was like an all or nothing or blah blah blah. So right, I think that the way it was sold was we're going to make a good impression on the governor, and then things will be okay. But I think that you know Hornsby again was working at cross purposes and kind of kind of maybe sold him a bill of goods there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing the interactions between Mercer and Daryl now. Uh, It looks like the two of them have kind of sorted each other out, you know, kind of gotten the measure of each other. And I don't think Mercer thinks Daryl is as much of a, you know, some rogue scrub that's been living out in the woods on his own. I think he kind of sees that Daryl, Daryl has been a step up kind of guy and was actually more important than he let on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I enjoyed seeing Maggie, as you said, kind of pulling the Rick from the comic book, being, you know, Miss Hardcore Independent. You know, I'm going to do what's best for my folks. And, 
there's all and and kind of her in the back of her mind me thinking you know she's saying to herself oh there's a catch because there's always a catch and uh, i think the other the other thing that some of the feet some of the listeners mentioned is i really i really enjoyed the scenes with uh eugene and max i think it was good to see them kind of work things out because that's what i mean come on that's what all of us were all hoping for and it was good to see the two of them actually being able to talk and kind of sort things out and now you know that i think the two of them as I don't want to say, you know, as a couple, because I think that might be overreaching. But, you know, the two of them, I think they already have a friendship built. And you kind of see the difference between Eugene and Max versus Eugene and faux Stephanie there. Because if you if you go back and think about it, I'm going to go back and rewatch it. It's like Eugene said, she knew some of the things to say, but she didn't know the things. So it was a lot more, it was a lot more surface. And I think that since, you know, Eugene and Max have actually talked and they kind of have, have know each other a little better because of all the radio chats that I think that that's going to be a whole different dynamic for them going forward. For sure. I mean, it's like, yeah, well, I mean, we'll go into it because uh, that's why I think this episode was so great. And the listeners, they've all had like such good comments that it was kind of took, took over the same ones that I would have said. So, <laughs> well, if we're all done with awesome, then that means it's time for weak sauce. You're all worthless and weak. Uh, the first comes. The first week sauce comes from Dieta from Detroit, and she says, "We have communities now. I thought all the people that was left um, were at Alexandria, but we still have Oceanside. And why is Maggie trying to rebuild Hilltop? Why, Maggie? Why is there even enough people to make a new community? Thinking face, and I guess meh face. <laughs> yep. Yep. I think that was a big question that we had. Like what? Not last episode. The episode before was kind of like." You know, right, Daryl mentioned it, and we we're like, "Okay, well, so where are they?" <laughs> yeah, and I I have a theory, but okay. <laughs> so the next bit of feedback we got is Emma from the UK, who says, "Not much week this week, although not sure about the Pamela thinks we should go hunting bit. Seemed a bit random, but I guess she wanted to speak to Maggie alone. Max clearly wearing big glasses, as she's meant to be a bit of a geek. Boring." cliched old method for depicting geekiness <laughs> and all of us spectacle wearing people agree <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i thought the whole i mean i thought the whole hunting situation just kind of put another reinforcement of like of pamela being the leader or governor but it was like it just it, it put it into that same sense of like oh yeah oh let's go onto the you know like hey sire let's go hunting and you know she's the leader so she's like oh I don't need a handler you know me me and Maggie are going to go do this right and it just it it seemed like yeah they th there was no reason for her to go hunt but it was like oh hey the queen is going to go on her hunt well and <laughs> since you brought that up I'm going to dog into it now. Yeah, what's up with the dressage boots and the riding jodfers? That's kind of, you know, if you're going out into the wilderness, you know, why don't you have your hikers and your REI hiking pants on instead of your very stiff, not comfy for walking equestrian boots and your super tight, stretchy equestrian pants? It just, it to me, it... It basically did just what you said. It, it's kind of like, you know, you know, pish tosh on the rabble. We're going out fox hunting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I. For me, it was definitely not the wardrobe of the people. Nope. 
not at all. <laughs> uh, well, next, uh, and our last feedback uh, comes from Alma from Sacramento, and she says, Hornsby, exclamation. He has an agenda, and I just can't figure it out. I hated how he was talking to Aaron. Yep. Well, I Agreed. think... I th- yeah, I think I think I think I'm figuring it out. I I see where our boy Lance is coming from. Yeah, and I think after like, I mean, we knew Hornsby was already on the shady side of things. Um, but it is, it is though still up in the air and like where, how far, like where you know is he trying to be his own governor or is he trying to? bring resources in or is he trying you know because i mean he's got the drug you know the drug people Mm -hmm. you know and it's kind of like so there's an agreement there between commonwealth and them to make drugs so it's like and and he's the spokesperson basically that goes back and forth so is he looking outside the walls to kind of yeah build his own little kind of thing it's it's back to the whole cardinal richelieu richelieu vibe that he's do you honestly think with the way that they have been so strict about rule breaking and law and order and, you know, trotting people off to the gulag in the Commonwealth, uh, that they would go for drug dealing that I'm betting that Pamela just knows that Hornsby has a source to get painkillers for the hospital. And she's not thinking far into it to think that he's, basically sponsoring a an opium cartel in the apocalypse <laughs> that uh, you know it's like I said he's shady he's got his fingers in lots of pies and i think that whether they're legit or kind of under the table i think that lance lance is crooked <laughs> so let's look at our week sauce and i have a few that's of course I would. Um, I, even though, I, like I said, I love the fact of having Eugene and Max talking. The whole thing about her in that box of radio parts, just it, that to me was almost weaker than Eugene stealing parts out of the downed satellite. Because just just from what I know about electronics, I, I'm just kind of going, either she's really, really good to to put together the box of stuff that they had from the prop department that they dumped out on the table, or, again, this was maybe another subterfuge that... Yeah, you know, somebody knew enough to say, hey, what well, if we put this out here? Somebody will pick it up and uh, start talking to people outside of the community. And that that kind of triggered my plausibility alarm. Um, just like so somebody was eavesdropping on Max and Eugene. And based on their conversation, they got enough information that they could use that information as a subterfuge to get more information out of Eugene once they lured Eugene to the train yard. I'm not saying that it's an impossible notion. It just seems like it's awfully convenient. I th- you know, that was my only thing, is that it just seemed like, oh, well, if we leave this stuff out here, maybe somebody will find it, and maybe somebody will talk to somebody outside, and maybe we can, you know, there's, there's way too many maybes in that string. Yeah, and then it's just like, okay, like, you know, it was like, how does Stephanie know what to say to Eugene? Well, she, they had to be listening. And well, no, then, yeah. And then, all of a sudden, the wrong person found out, or they listened a little too long and somebody who was not in the loop found out about it. And then it was, you know, Mercer being all, uh, you know, film noir gumshoe detective and tracking down those illicit radio signals. (laughs) Um, I guess it goes into the plot, but it still seems kind of weak. The fact that, you know, beware of, Commonwealthers bearing gifts. It's just like they're 
their stuff seems like very contrary. Like, hey, we're here to help. We're here to give you food and stuff and things and help out. And then it's like, but, you know, you need to play along to get along. It's like, come on, you don't want to stay here in your burned out old antebellum mansion. You want to come back to the Commonwealth. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like we give them stuff to kind of weaken their defenses and make them think we're good guys. And then we give them the hard sell at the end that, you know, it's a limited time contract. If you don't sign now, you know, we'll, we'll give this deal on the timeshare to somebody else. You know, it just... It just that bothered me. And I guess the last thing that I thought was kind of weak was, so why did the bailers out at Hilltop wait until that very moment to decide they were going to bail? Other than the fact it made a very nice plot juxtaposition for them to do so. I mean, yeah. if we knew the, con I mean, obviously the Commonwealth folks had been coming by. You know, obviously they had been, you know, they had interacted and brought some stuff prior to this it just seemed like that you know they they knew kind of what the deal was about we're going to bring you some stuff and we expect a little help out and you know we're trying to you know spread our reach to other communities blah blah blah, blah. but then it's like oh so you're going to wait until the governor shows up to decide that you want to you want to take the deal and move into the commonwealth like i said it it just didn't feel kind of natural. It felt like we're going to put this in here so it makes Maggie's position look worse, perhaps. I don't know if worse is quite the right word, but you kind of dig what I'm saying. That yeah. uh, Maggie was being, you know, hold out and not taking, you know, not taking the golden ticket deal. And then all these other guys that have been working with her go, yeah, Maggie, well, we want, we want ice cream in record shops. So we're going to leave. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good point. It was kind of like made the feeling of like, oh, it's like, what's her decision? You know, like, is she making the wrong decision? But then, you know, it was just playing and like, oh, okay, well, she made the decision to not accept and of course, okay, well then what's the cost of that? And it's like, oh, she loses uh what's her face? Um rate or uh, I can't remember her name. The the archer chick. I want to say Laura, but I don't think it's Laura. I think it's Rachel. Rachel, yeah. Um well, so they had to make a I guess they had to put that in there so that you know Maggie would have a loss to be oh, right. Yeah. You know. And she's she's like been in the show quite a while she was one of ezekiel's people and so now she's deciding that she wants to you know go to the commonwealth which i mean if you look at it without all the subtext that the viewer is aware of i mean would you want to keep living out in the sticks when you could go to a town with lights and restaurants and Ice cream and ice cream, right? And we don't have any indication that there has been any commu communication between our people that are living in the Commonwealth to the people outside, because you know, like I think if there was kind of little hints or things in the episode of like you know hilltop people, like they're still rebuilding, and when Maggie shows up with food, they were all like, oh, you know, almost kind of like okay, they're still struggling, you know, with right. just getting. The, their basic needs but then again you know we know our people are in the commonwealth are all like yeah this place is not all cracked up what you know right what it seems but then they haven't been talking to you know right it's not like it's not like daryl has been stopping by regularly to kind of right. catch maggie <laughs> up yeah but i mean yeah it's just another plot plot device another plot <laughs> point and we'll see what becomes of it in the next few episodes yeah i did not have any other weak sauce for, for this episode so we can okay if we're done with our weak sauce that means it's time for what sauce what 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 and we'll kick off the what sauce with emma from the uk who says lance is crazy thought pamela would be the baddie but no it's lance he's power hungry for sure <laughs> 
Yes, yep. he is. Uh, next is Renee from Atlanta, and she said, Aaron, if you can't tell old Lancey boy is a little off, and she's like, I roll, I roll, I roll, you don't need to be the leader of Alexandria. They need to pick someone else really quick. Clearly, Hornsby, Hornsby is unhinged. I roll, I roll. Uh, Deanna, um, or Di- Diana wouldn't care how much ice cream Mayberry has. It's no way in hell I would trust those folks after all you have been through with Maggie and them. So why does Pamela feel she gets to drive a nicer car and stay in a nicer house? I miss her reasoning behind that, and I don't blame Maggie for not wanting to go back to that world. Thumbs down, thumbs down. Indeed so. Yes, I think that's uh, one of the things that, you know, we're getting from this episode is like, I think Maggie had a moment there at the end where I can't remember what was going on. It's like, or she saw something with Daryl, but it was like, obviously I was like waiting for it because it's like, you know, she's questioning her all the time or Pamela, you know, being like trying to like size her up. And it, it seemed very like, okay, this is really like opposite of, you know, how the real world out there works. <laughs> right. And I think, I think that Maggie kind of took Pamela's measure there. And I think Pamela did the same of Maggie, but Pamela's looking through her lens. You know, she just sees her as, you know, she's a leader, but she's not a leader like me. Right. You know, it's, it's, she had that, as we've said, that whole layer of, well, you know, I'm an important politician's daughter who's being an important politician. And, you know, my whole family has been bred to be important politicians. And so we, you know, the the people deserve that their leader should be looked up to. And I said, eh, a little Kim Jong Illy there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was stuck in the past, and that's where mm-hmm. her power came from. So, yep. So, my what's all, I have to start off with Lance and the little snub nose pistol. Uh, just for editorial content, it's a five shot revolver. So, how many walkers did he shoot and how many shots did he fire? And if I count correctly, the number is six. So, he must have borrowed that pistol from the old Hawaii 5.0 prop house where it didn't matter how many times you pulled the trigger, it would go bang. We have, you know, eight, nine, ten shot snub nose, five shot revolvers. And about that. And and again, I will caveat this. I have carried and qualified with a revolver with the barrel of the same length. And it is far more difficult to make shots at long range. And I'm using two hands. And Lance was using one hand and making, again, with the old Hawaii 5.0 reference, He was making those Steve McGarrett special one-handed sniper shots at 50 yards with a pistol with a two-inch barrel. I'm just saying. (laughs) Um, And Lance may be that good of a shot. I I won't take that away from him, but I just didn't see anything in his background that said he was a, you know, an Olympic level pistol shooter amongst selling used cars and being a cheap attorney. Uh, My next bit of hot sauce is Pamela's tactical Winnebago that she was in. It it just seemed way out of place that not only did she have a vehicle when all of her minions were riding horses or walking, and then the inside of it, you know, the fact that she had a tablecloth and like, tchotchkes and i'm like you you this is not this is not an rv for the apocalypse this is like some you know paranoid rich person's you know i'm going to go camp like the little people do kind of vehicle 
And finally about our girl, Pamela. So when she's out in the woods with Maggie and the walkers start walking up, Maggie dispatched hers how <laughs> she shot it with a bow. And what are what are arrows and bows typically, Kyle? They're very quiet. Yes. <laughs> and so what did Pamela do? No, she unlimbers with the twelve gauge and shoots the walker. And what have we learned in well, I don't know, eleven seasons of The Walking Dead? <laughs> that the gunshots attract walkers. The gunshots are loud and gunshots attract walkers. So I was kind of going, well, it was kind of a, a, a Bruce moment for you there, Pamela, but probably not the smartest thing to do because, again, she's used to having Mercer and two or three troopies following her around all the time. And so if she does something that's uh, apocalypse tactically stupid, she has somebody to uh, take them out. Yeah. And it just it just seemed to be kind of well it kind of like a rookie mistake, a little oblivious perhaps. Well, I think it might be just that, you know, they don't know that because like they've right. lived within their little shelter and so they don't understand that like cuz now it already makes it makes you think it's like okay, great. So you're making all this noise and I don't see like and I was kind of surprised that like Maggie didn't say something cuz like you guys are making all this noise around Hilltop, like, and then you're going to leave, <laughs> and then there's like this herd probably forming and coming right after them. Yep. And it would have been it's your- like, let's get, mm -hmm. yeah, it would have been their fault. So let's get out and stir the pot, shake things up, and leave. Yeah, and I kind of was surprised that that didn't like that Maggie didn't say it's like, oh, uh, oh, hey, like, don't like be firing like that. But um, then that's also like with uh. Or um, not on that sense, too, but it was like there was that one scene where it was like the Commonwealth soldiers came up when they were all fighting the walkers, like Mercer was doing his little cool axe thing or whatever. Right. And it was just like weird that it was like they all were pointing at the the, the Commonwealth soldiers, soldiers were pointing, you know, at the walkers, but then behind the walkers were our people. <laughs> and then they mow them all down with their guns, of course, making lots of loud noise. But then I was like, ha you guys are really that great of shots that like you didn't hit anybody that was standing directly behind <laughs> those walkers. <laughs> yeah. The, the whole, the whole know your target and what's beyond it and collateral damage seem to be things that they don't teach in Commonwealth yeah, trooper school. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I thought it was just like a weird, like, was that a mistake? Like, did you guys not think about that when you're shooting this? Cause it just, seemed very or like they weren't at it like some other angle or like even like came up behind them and in front of them right so. well i think it's one of those things that we notice and they may not have been paying attention to yeah well it was a what <laughs> exactly so they dress like stormtroopers. I guess it's a good thing they don't shoot like stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. It's all over the place. Um, no, uh, another one of my watts was uh, was Milton was asking about how they lost Deanna, and then Aaron said she was bitten, and then she asked like if she had turned, and I felt again like is that not known? Like, have you not, like, I don't know if it was just, I either just kind of read into it wrong, but even when I rewatched it again, it, it still stuck in my mouth. It's like, why would you ask that? Like, she got bitten. Of course, she's going to turn. That's what happens, you know? And, right. I, and, and I think that plays to your point of they don't have as much practical experience out in the wastes as our guys do. Or, yeah, or that, or like, she's not experience someone being bit i'm sure someone in the commonwealth maybe has experienced that but she's again oblivious to like some kind of these simple like known things <laughs> right uh and then i thought it was interesting that they call i don't know if this is really a what but other than just like it kind of was like oh huh like they call them swarms instead of herds 
And I know like right. everybody kind of has their own terminology that they bring, you know, like they from whatever group. So we've heard the walkers being called, you know, dummies or empties or, you know, like whatever. So I don't know. Yeah. Empties, empties and biters and skin jobs and whatever yeah. else. So I thought it was just interesting. Like, oh, hearing something else like, oh, swarms instead of like herds. So that was, I don't know. It was kind of just interesting. Well, you know, insects swarm and uh, large herbivores herd. So it could just, it could, like I said, it could just be uh, that's that's how they see it. Or yeah, okay, that's true. It's a different way of like yeah, categorizing it. Yep. Okay. Well then, now that we're out of the whats, it's time for our sad and all sauce. All right, well, our one, or no, our first sad and awe sauce comes from Renee from Atlanta, and she says, her sad sauce is Eugene having such low self-esteem that he couldn't even tell the fake Stephanie was fake. Just watching and listening to his interaction with Stephanie slash Max, his intuition should have kicked in, and he should have realized something was off because their connection was so strong. They were finishing each other's sentences. She was telling him what he should have written in his novel. They truly have chemistry, and she seems to be a little dorky just like him, and they vibe together much better than him and the fake Stephanie. And they look cuter together. To me, she's much cuter than the fake Stephanie. Shrug, shrug. I have had people to inbox me and pretend to be one of my Facebook friends, and I know immediately that it's not them because I know how they talk and the words that they use without even hearing their voice. Their vibe is completely off, so I know I'm being catfished, and I tell them to uh, kick rock, but Eugene just wanted to be in love, that he just went along with it um, to get along. Face palm, face palm. I'm going to need Eugene to pick his head and shoulders up and stop all that blubbering and put his big boy pants <laughs> or draws on because I'm sick of this po down trodden. No one loves me, Eugene. Or cuss face, cuss face emoji. Dang, he's too old to be talking about how um, he's been rejected so many times that he just got used to it. Eugene, there is someone for everyone. Now that you have found your true love, I need you to become the badass Eugene that sabotaged Neek and, and the Saviors. Strong arm, strong arm, strong arm. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I can kind of buy into it, though, a little bit. But, yeah, you know, it's like you, you, you get blinded by your own wants and desires and he really wanted it so it's just like he lived in the fantasy i'm sure he thought at times that like maybe something wasn't like you know adding up because you know he's really smart and you know he thinks about things like 10 steps ahead or but i think he got sepped up into it and i don't think he'll let that ever happen again uh, I don't know because it is one of those things he is really smart but he is kind of like kind of a social you know not quite there with people so yeah well i mean we can hope we can we can learn from his mistakes <laughs> and then she gives an ah sauce and king ezekiel is going to get his surgery and still die cry face cry face because it's no um because it's known way he's going on the road with daryl and carol thinking face thinking face and little Herschel with Mercer's helmet on was super cute. Uh, kiss emoji, kiss emoji. Yes, it was. Yeah. Oh, do you think they're going to have King Ezekiel die? I don't. I'm still not on. I'm not. I, I, I'm tending to think they may. Yeah. Only because when Kari Payton was on talking dead you know he acknowledged the fact that the ezekiel in the comic books died at the pikes mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and the way he was saying you know every every script he gets he looks at and he goes uh, not this time <laughs> so i'm thinking there might be some handwriting on the wall for that okay. Oh, no, and it's not that I'm not like saying like, oh, I would be surprised um, in that way. It just Well, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't want him to, yeah. but uh, given their propensity to go all Game of Thrones, they're. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, which then makes it really. Uh, well, we'll get into it in the news section because <laughs> because okay. it kind of makes it green. Like, uh, well, then anyway. So we'll, I'll make a comment then. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so we got another bit of sad sauce from Emma from the UK, who says Eugene and Rosita's friendship. Eugene and Max talking about his book. They're definitely on the same page. And I would concur. concur. And so my little bit of sad sauce was, yes, it was good to see Eugene and Max making up because we all knew it was supposed to be her. And even though things went horribly astray there for a while, I think that hopefully that will be one of our happy storylines here as we're wrapping the series up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have to agree. That's why I just didn't really have any more to add. Um, Although I thought it was another little interesting insight, maybe that it was like that I was seeing that, that scene where she was still like, you know, Eugene was basically apologizing to her of having all these, like sharing their stories and the stuff that they talked about with the you know, the false Stephanie and then kind of being torn about like, oh, well, you know, I'm like, I don't know if like, you know, or like just being mad that, you know, he did that. And I was kind of like, well, like, like the whole situation, like, how can you be mad? It's like now that he's apologized, you know, like he's there and you guys can like talk that it was, a, you know, again, leaning on that side of like, you know, like, oh, this is experiences that they haven't had because I, I feel like that was like outside of the commonwealth you know like they've all lived through all so many situations of life and death this and that that it would be like oh okay that makes sense yes i'm not mad at you like <laughs> i don't know it just i just kind of had that thought whenever that whole scene played yeah it, it did it did get a little into the uh high school romance slash cw teleplay uh, luckily, we didn't quite get to the emotional content of a Telemundo hospital <laughs> soap opera, but uh, there was there was still a little bit of a little bit of forced forced drama. Maybe that's a good yeah, word. Yeah, that's it. a good word. That's kind of how I felt. But it was still all well. Then it's time to get in some written feedback from our listeners. We can talk about it. Done talking. Time to listen. All right. Well, first comes from Renee from Atlanta. But first, I wanted to... Uh, she sent in a voicemail um, after I had announced that we were uh, postponing. Uh, I know that she's not on Facebook. So I emailed her to like say, hey, to let her know. And she sent a really nice voicemail in just saying of like how much she felt, you know, nice that, you know, we were thinking of her and like, you know, just, I don't know. It was really, really nice. So thank you, Renee. And don't, you know, yeah, I I was actually, you know, concerned right off of when I decided to postpone that I was just all like, oh, I haven't got anything from Renee. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm like, I better let her know, so, <laughs> you know, that she has more time because I right. love her feedback. And so I got you, Renee. So thank you for that voicemail. It was really, really nice. Um, but let's get into her written feedback. She said, overall, it was a decent episode, but like I have been saying for weeks, I need to know what the hell is going on. I didn't understand why Mercer say it. Things can go badly for him and Max, especially him and Max. Uh, Thinking face, thinking face emoji. It has to be because they're a part of the resistance, but what the heck is the resistance? Shrug, shrug emoji. Hornsby is clearly the governor all over again because he's definitely bonkers. Eugene and Max is going to make a great team, I believe, and I really hope she does not die because he would not be able to handle it. I was happy to see Oceanside. Kiss emoji, kiss emoji. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm not happy with Max's hair either. Walking Dead, if any of you guys are listening, (laughs) holler at me, please. I would be happy to work on your show as one of your hairstylists. I have been in the hair industry for over 30 years. I have my license and I make magic happen with these hands. (laughs) Like, just raising hand, raising hand. (laughs) I miss interacting with you guys on Facebook page. Have an awesome rest of the week. 
Uh, thank you, Renee. We, I, yeah, just don't worry. I, you know, keep those things going on. And if I don't see it in the emails, I will definitely reach out to like me, like letting you know if, you know, we postpone or, you know, maybe I'll send you an email. Um, we're going to hear from her again on voicemail for in our news section. Um, right. She had her, you know, her response to the whole announcement. Oh, I'm sure she does. <laughs> and, and I was going to say just about your hair thing. I was kind of wondering after I saw a picture of her with how she wears her hair normally and then seeing how she, they did her hair as Max, I'm thinking, is that a wig or did they actually, did they actually put that much, you know, relaxer in her to get her hair all straight? So I kind of agree with you that they need to take you up on the offer, <laughs> do something about her hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, might send them the, yeah. Send in an email to the <laughs> AMC. Well, it's like I've said before, you know, if, if you're listening out there, uh, Angela and Scott mm, Gimple, <laughs> we got a hookup for you in Atlanta, or in the or in the greater Atlanta metropolitan yeah. area. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Thank you. So we got some feedback from Deanna from Detroit, and she says, "I don't like Hornsby at all. He is a deranged individual." Why is he trying so hard to get the communities to go along with the Commonwealth? Pamela better watch her back with this one. He looks like he will turn on her in a heartbeat. Our people are now confessing they miss the freedom of Alexandria, so why leave? Clearly, our people will be going into the resistance once the secrets of the Commonwealth are revealed and the uprising begins. It looks like our people see the Commonwealth as a temporary situation, a stopgap residence until their home can be rebuilt. It works for now, Rosita says to Eugene, summing up why so many of our people are rolling with the punches. Aaron is now the leader of Alexandria and wants the help of the Commonwealth. Even Daryl sees a chance to not have to lose sleep every night worrying about Judith and the rest of his people. Even though Daryl is ignoring some gigantic red flags from his new buddy Mercer. Seriously, Daryl, you're just going to shrug off his remember they're always watching? This is going to be interesting watching these two work together. Ezekiel gets his much-needed life-saving surgery thanks to Carol and her boss lady moves. But seriously, the Commonwealth is willing to let people die because they can't afford needed medical treatments? That is a big red flag for a supposedly thriving community. Pamela can't possibly believe that this is the way to bring civilization back. She's asking for a ride against the wealthy, which will become part of the uprising. Overall, an okay episode. And she follows that with two shrugs. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. It seems very weird that you, like, have... I mean, I can kind of get maybe where there's, you know, there's resources involved. But, like, putting it in such a way that, like, oh, if you're not, like, at a certain status or, you know, your job doesn't your job which is basically kind of almost forced upon you unless you somehow can like you know like do something to kind of move you up the line um that yeah it's like you're paying for medical procedures like the old days that seems very right. that seems very like that well it makes no sense it's, it's kind of insidious it's almost like we're gonna make you pay it off but it's rationed almost like well you know you're you know you're a class one citizen so you've got to wait because there's a class two citizen that needs a procedure done and then oh well, this class three citizen is going to bump the two down so you're as a one are going to get bumped again yeah uh as the story of a friend of mine told me uh and not to try to wax any type of political about it but there was a friend of mine who knows somebody that lived in Canada. And of course they're on like a uh, national health care thing. And so they were on a waiting list to get a knee replacement. So they came across the border, went to the U S and as long as you can pony up and pay cash, 
then you can get it done almost immediately. So it's it's cool that the Commonwealth has a thing where, you know, oh, well, you know, we we'll just put it on your tab and you can work it off like a barbell, but you still have to wait. And that, I think, is the downside of that. Yeah. I don't necessarily have so much of a problem with them, you know, having a tab, but the fact that you're going well because you're, you know, you're not important enough, you have to wait. Right, right. And then it's like, okay, well, then why is that? Is there just too, not enough to, you know, like, are there only two doctors in that hospital, you know, or is it right. like, you know. Is it a matter, is it manpower and resources or is it just. Yeah, status. You know, this is status. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> and none of none of us are a fan of status plays. No, not at all. It's and yeah, it's another still kind of like uh, like well just like everything we've ever seen but like a Hunger Games, you know. It's like, "Well, yes, you're, you know, the ones that have like the the haves and the ha- you know, have nots, you know, it's like they're they're coming for you. You, you can only right. you can only like It's It's Hunger Games and then it's almost medieval. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, with with the serfs and the nobles. Yep. Because uh, they do like to force you into whatever you were before, which is still, again, weird. You know, like, I mean, or in the sense of just like, not that it's weird, but in the w- sense of like, is that really like the best way to do things? You know, is it is it, is that right. the most efficient way to do things? <laughs> right. Because I was trying to think, I don't know, what did Maggie do before the apocalypse? She was, well, I, uh, she worked, well, she was at I, the farm, but what, I think she was. Yeah, that's what I was saying, is that, you know, if if Maggie, outside of her status as being, having been such a good leader all this time, if they said, what did you do before, and she basically worked on her dad's farm, yeah. You know, does that mean that she would immediately be out, yeah. you know, growing potatoes and turnips? Right. And then it's kind of like, uh, no, she has much. Yeah. It's like, but yeah, that's just the weird. Yeah. That's just the weird. Or- well, it, it's, it's the thing that you've said before is that the apocalypse has allowed some of these characters to develop a skill set that they had that they may not have had to use otherwise in something other than the apocalypse. Right. Yep. And Pamela is not using that. Uh, yep. All right. No, next is Emma from the UK. And she says, I think Mercer and Daryl are making a connection. Mercer clearly not happy with everything at Commonwealth. And I think he could be an ally and may switch sides to our people when it comes to the crunch. Hope everyone is well. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Um, yeah, I think there's kind of foreshadowed. <laughs> that that's Mercer. Every episode that we've seen is getting more and more of like almost kind of like he's seeing more of the outside world and how you know he thinks how the Commonwealth has basically been telling him like oh yeah you you do this and you stick to this and he's seeing that Dar- like a Daryl that he probably already summed him up on his own like like oh yeah that guy's like kind of a he must have been like a nobody, but it's just like, no, he was a leader of this community. So it's time will tell. Yep. That maybe Mercer was a bit of a hothouse flower there. Hasn't been out much. Okay. Well, we got some feedback from Almer from Sacramento. And she said, did y'all catch how Mercer told Daryl to get in line? Maggie caught it and have a, a scant eyebrow emoji i don't know what's going to go down against maggie but i'm on her team but especially because i do not trust hornsby or his intentions looking forward to hearing y'all's thoughts oh thank you alma yeah i mean so we go back to the little uh jump time jump at the beginning you know where there's daryl and the you know him in and he's in a suit to like walking up to hilltop so it's kind of like huh i i don't think daryl i don't think that's going to be a i feel I feel like that's going to something's going to happen that hornsby is going to be like trying to get something from her and uh-huh. so we'll have to see what that is 
time will tell. But that is correct. But yeah, but not that Daryl's going to be like against her for anything. I think that's kind of way f- not going to happen. <laughs> well, at least we hope not. Yeah, I would hope not. Um. All right. Well, I guess I'll just go ahead and, and take Glennis from Toronto. Um. And she says, seeing Pamela escorted by her stormtroopers to view her potential additional kingdoms, quote, reminds me of the Romans and Egyptians carrying their kings and queens a lot. Same treatment of the serfs and underlings. Agreed, agreed, agreed. That's exactly my thoughts. (laughs) Uh, I didn't comment on Carol's debt paid to Lance Hornsby in the last episode, but Ezekiel is right to be worried and concerned for that reason. He's bumped up to the top of the opt list. Lance Hornsby will ask for more favors from Carol, although Carol will always be one up on Lance. The result wasn't so good for Eugene when he was duped into telling the Commonwealth about Alexandria. Uh, Agreed. I would be very surprised if Carol it gets taken off guard by something. She, I, I feel like though she did take a risk. Yes. To save Ezekiel, and so what that you know what that means for you know what what, what Lance is going to ask for in Carol, which should, should be interesting. But again, I wonder if Carol has added that to her equation <laughs> well and that's the thing is especially with carol carol has always been in my mind the 4d chess player yeah yeah so maybe horns will surprise her but i think she will have thought out uh, a lot of moves as far as well if he does this i can do this and uh yeah, I think if anybody can get one up on Hornsby, it'll be Carol. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely want to see that, though. <laughs> uh, and she goes on, Eugene struck such a lovely figure on that um, bench. So Eugene told Rosia he had just broken up with Stephanie. Of course, he didn't reveal the whole sorry mess. Time will tell if Eugene will get to tell the full story, especially to Carol as she's make Lance look at the flowers. <laughs> But The Walking Dead is going to draw that plot line out as usual. Oh, I would love to see Carol make Lance look at the flowers. Look at the flowers, Lance. Look at the flowers. I mean, that's one of the fun things about like this show and like and this kind of, you know, Carol and Lance kind of duo is because exactly that, you know, Carol has made, <laughs> you know, some bigger decisions. Oh yeah. And as far as Carol goes, you always go back to the, you know, happy homemaker Carol versus gut poncho terminus blowing up Carol. <laughs> or or even um, you can have another cookie, but if you don't shut up, I'm going to sneak into your house in the middle of the night and gut you like a frog, Carol. <laughs> oh, Carol, Carol, Carol. Yep. Ah, uh, so awesome. <laughs> Uh, all right, and continues. Uh, respect is there between Maggie and Pamela, with Pamela showing she isn't scared of walkers with them exchanging walker kills or both showing each other that they mean business. Battle lines drawn of sorts. Pamela doesn't seem interested in acquiring these communities if they don't want to join in, but of course Lance is, is another matter, and he won't stop at anything to get what he wants and be a leader of Alexandria, Hilltop, and Oceanside. I think he even has thoughts to rule over the Commonwealth. Pamela would like to be with Oceanside in order to provide a spa for her feet at the moment's notice. <laughs> Smiley face. Yeah, I think that was an interesting scene because it's like that's going to be her summer retreat. But again, she's not going to share that with the rest of the community. Like, you know, it's sort of like the it's it'd be sort of like the Commonwealth's Camp David. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, Mercer is not aware that Daryl is a leader. Mercer, Mercer was taken aback that the survivors treat everyone as an equal. I don't like the treatment of Daryl in order to fall in with the rest of the troops, though Mercer seemed to soften the shame by saying, you need to keep up appearances as someone is always watching. So not a very democratic order. Maggie losing some of her group, especially Diane, who has been through hardship after hardship with Maggie. So that one really hurt Maggie. Yeah. I'm not feeling this Eugenio romance with the Stephanie, who is now known as Max. They sure like these name 
games in the Walking Dead universe, that's for sure. And those glasses look ridiculous. <laughs> Smiley face. And Lance shooting off rounds to attract walkers and then pick them off one by one. Pure wild-eyed madness. No one would have want him as a leader. Aaron was probably wondering what they've got themselves in for. Yes. Yes, he did. Yep. And The Walking Dead is really missing Rick Grimes, who brought everyone together and provided depth. Now, without him, they're just playing and acting out this Survivor game. The off-screen influence of Andrew Lincoln is now clearly visible. Yes, yes. Indeed so. Yep. I just just come to basic terms that Maggie is Rick. Like, that's where this is leading. Because I know, comic book-wise, that... Some of what's be this would have been Rick. Yes, exactly. And you could even see that. I mean, it almost just felt like a like, oh yeah, the, okay, this is this is like this was what Rick Grimes would be doing. He would oh, because he would be meeting with her, you know, like and you know, this would have clearly been Rick and Pamela Milton, like, you know, having their little meeting and doing the same exchange. So just like Rick had the meeting, the first meeting with Deanna, and Rick had the meeting with Negan, and Rick had the meeting with, you know, whomever else. Yep. Which would have been great to see. <laughs> yep. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, for all your wonderful be- feedback, as always. Um, I didn't have anything else really to add. Um, no, I think I think we're going to have all of the rest of our comments after the news. Yes. There's a couple weird stories on the news. All right. Uh, the ratings this week uh, on The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 12, got a 0. .38 in the 1849 with 1.582 million viewers, uh, a 0. .54 in the 2554, and a 0. .87 in the 50+. Plus. And this was down um, from last week by a little, so I mean, it wasn't like a big drop. But uh, Season 11, Episode 11, got a 0. .42 in the 1849 with a 1.672 million viewers, a 0. .60 in the 2554, and a 0. .90 in 50 plus. So just, you know, shy of like, what, 100,000? Yeah. So not bad. Not bad. That's I mean, Not bad at all. Uh, Talking Dead kind of did the same thing. Season 11, Episode 12 um, got a point one six in the 1849 with 705,000 viewers from the Season 11, Episode 11 of Talking Dead, which got a point one eight in the 1849 with 687,000 viewers. So little viewer, a little less viewers, but you know the rating in the demo, I guess, was up. Right. And I'm going, okay, so it's a lower number, but they had more viewers. Right. <laughs> is that because is that because it wasn't the right demographic to skew the number? Yeah, probably. I didn't look at the actual like I actually don't yeah, I those numbers are there but I don't I didn't look at them and put them in the docs. It's yeah. they only cover the main part of it. That's right. <clears throat> All right, and then on to the parrots. Uh The Walking Dead dropped to number 8 this week from number 6 the last 3 weeks. Uh at 43 times the demand of the average show, down from 44 times last week. Uh, and, of course, remaining at number one is SpongeBob SquarePants with 68.1 times, which was up from 65.6 times last week. And remaining at number two is Saturday Night Live with 62 times um, the demand of the average show, up from 46.4 times last week. Uh, number three is Euphoria, and that's at 57.2 two times down from 55.8 times last week, which is obvious because that just started. <laughs> and I guess Saturday Night Live has been doing a lot of stuff with, um, since there's the, the war in Ukraine and they were doing some, you know, stuff with that, which I'm sure got some, you know, added watchers, but yeah, yeah, it's Saturday Night Live. It usually does pretty good. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I, usually kind usually kind of consistent. Yeah. I just wait for like Sundays at some point and I'll just kind of scroll through it. <laughs> I haven't watched Saturday Night Live, you know, in real time in forever. Right. Uh, well, okay. It looks like it's time for the news. Yes. And we have lots of news. Yes. All right. Well, first, though, with the announcement of Isle of the Dead, 
the spinoff, um, Renee actually sent us a voicemail with her reaction to that. <laughs> so let me play that. Hi, guys. This is Renee from Febburn. I am sounding much better this week. I took me some Allegra, but my voice tends to go out once I return to the hair salon. And that's why I called because I wanted you guys to know that I work in a hair salon because I know that you're always, you, you guys are probably saying, why is she talking about someone's hair? Why is she talking about she don't like this person's hair? Why is she talking about Kelly has this black stuff in her hair or whatever? But yeah, I'm a stylist. So of course, I'm going to notice here. I don't care where I am or what I'm doing or, you know, what I'm attending, a concert, a festival, whatever, watching TV, like the hair stands out because that's what I do all day, every day. So, you know, it's so noticeable to me. Um, and also, I wanted to address this rumor that I heard that they, Maggie and Negan are going to have a show. They're going to have a spinoff show called Isle of the Dead. It's just, I just do not believe that The Walking Dead would do that. I mean, that's going to be horrible. That's like, um, they do not mix. That's like mixing a bologna sandwich with sardines or peanut butter with grits. It just does not mix. Maggie and Negan, no way. No way in the hell. I, I cannot stand the idea of that. And I'm a Walking Dead fan. And I'm, I'm going to watch all the spinoff, but I'm not watching that. Not at all. I will not watch that. I would not support that. I know that Glenn is turning over in his grave. Like, are y'all kidding me? I really hope that this is just a rumor and it's not actual, you know, actually true because I do know that, you know, you know, of course, people are always making up rumors. They really do not know. But that has really got me upset. That has really gotten my blood to balling. I am over here just totally upset. And I really hope I got this in in time tonight. I sent you all my feedback um, in an email, but I also just wanted to send a voicemail because you know that's what I do. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> uh, yes, like, oh my gosh. I, <laughs> well, it's, it's not a rumor. Yes, it's not a rumor. I've seen the key art. Yeah. And no, and, well, that's the thing. Since she's not on social media, that's why I was kind of like very right. like, glad that she like, at least is like, and, some. And, and my thing is, man, I know you hate it, but I'm so excited because I think, unlike your grits and bologna analogy, I think, I think this is going to be, I think this is going to be the best frenemy buddy cop duo show ever and it's the fact that they have all this history it's the fact that you know maggie has to work with the guy that killed her husband but we've seen in the episodes where they were together especially this season that they may not be past it they may not have worked it out but we know they can work together and i'm sorry <laughs> seeing seeing jdm and lauren cohen together on the show on the screen together they work they have it's not chemistry it's that opposing magnetic electric energy together yeah i i'm i i hate to i hate to be the contrarian but <laughs> as my you know as my job as the russian judge it's still i'm i'm still thinking it's going to be good and I mean, I, I agree on only that as long as they do it right, because, yes. you know, and plus we don't even know what the circumstances of them doing this and going to exactly this New York. like, you know, it's like, is, you know, that something has to force Maggie and Negan to work together, you know, like this. So that's going to be very interesting because yeah, they're going to be like, okay, We've got to work together for the greater good, even though we both want to kill each other. <laughs> you know, so exactly, so that, and that's that's what I'm saying. That could play off really well and really entertaining. And 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 that will go back to my point that the fact that they have that low level animosity because of stuff that happened a long time ago 
there has to be, I'm hoping they're going to have a really compelling reason for the fact that they're together and going to New York. Right, right. So, I, I like I said, we'll just have to see. And I'm kind of more, I, I hate to say it, I'm kind of more excited about this than I am the Carol and Daryl road trip. No, and that was like the other side of the coin, too, because it was kind of like, even, you know, just thinking about it, it was, it's like, okay, well... Carol and Daryl like road show basically it's kind of like what's what are they doing you know it's they're, they're like a, what what you know what's that going to be about and also I don't know I still have not seen if like how many episodes that's going to be like like right I have not found like they say oh it's six episodes like Isle of the Dead which that also is like okay well is this going to be kind of like a a quick run through New York because they're doing six episodes. So there's going to be kind of like one story that is going to be really easy to, to from start to finish of like, whatever this reason is. So, you know, it's going to be a much fast pace. And I don't know if Carol and Daryl spinoff is supposed to be more of like a new, you know, like a world beyond, you know, where it's like, it gets right. 10 episodes for season one, you know, and it's like, or if it gets, if it gets, a season one with the option for a season two and season three. Right. You know, to change geek hats for a moment, we know that Picard is only going to be three seasons. You're right. So we, we sort of knew that world beyond was only going to be two seasons. Yep. So yes, that's, I don't know. Yeah. That's, they may, they may just give us one season or one, you know, one mini series arc, if you want to put that context in, but we don't know. Yep. We'll have to wait to see. Hopefully. Well, and they're, they're both going to um, air next year. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll just have to wait till more news comes out about that. But it was interesting that I, I came across today, actually, um, that, it was reported that Jeffrey D. Morgan was actually shocked at the AMC's unveiled of the spinoff so early. And it went in saying basically about, um, it was talking about how surprised everybody was about them deciding that uh, season 11 was going to be the final season. And they almost like they, uh, uh, they were like kept in the dark about that whole announcement. And so basically like during, you know, because they were dealing with COVID and all that stuff. And then they made this, an, you know, announcement that they're going to, you know, in the walking dens with season 11, that it kind of like, I mean, you know, kind of like, I guess kind of irked him a bit because then recently he was a guest speaker or he was a guest on the rich um, Eisen show and yeah. he again seemed irritated by the quality of communication from AMC. Um, he uh, said that the announcement of the new show seemingly spoiled the rest of Negan's journey in season eleven. And so he actually was quote: "He said, now that we've announced that there's going to be a spinoff, I guess we don't need to die." <laughs> End quote. So, spoiler alert, folks. I'm sorry. I'm still not sure why we announced that already. It was sort of sort of a shocker to me. So that's kind of interesting because it it that's come up in comments that we've made. Um, I know it's come up. I've seen it online, and it is kind of like well. So we obviously know that Maggie and Negan are going to survive, you know. And so it kind of kind of ruins it. Kind of ruins it all, you know. It kind of ruins the whole like, well, this used to always be about like, oh, anybody can die at any moment, and it's like, oh, not our favorite right. characters, and now it's almost kind of being like, what the hell, like King Ezekiel. What I was like really wanting to refer to from earlier was just kind of like, well, like, is he going to make it or not? Right, and then if he doesn't, then it's kind of like, well, you know, that's. You know, it's almost kind of like it's there's no more surprises anymore. And it's just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, he's gone. You know, he had the surgery. Right. It's going to be obvious. Okay, he died from complications or maybe he refuses it or something. But yeah. It, or maybe, or maybe they do the, uh, since we were talking about 
Glenn earlier. Maybe they do a dumpster <laughs> Jesus with him, and then he accidentally gets killed somewhere else. Yeah. Or, so it's like, I survived. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, it just it goes to like... Yeah, what's going on with AMC? Like, why did they do this? Like, and then not even like letting the actual characters or you know the actors know that that's what's going to happen. Well, and that's 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 like you you had said that we knew that the series was ending before some of the cast and crew knew that the series was ending. No, I that you know AMC kind of leaked it out in public before they told the production team. <laughs> so, so I would say, you know, to in Jeffrey Dean Morgan's defense in some ways, AMC's not had the best track record for press press releases. Yeah. Or internal communication. <laughs> uh, it just makes you wonder, like it's it just being sloppy or, was there something forcing the hand that they're like, oh, no, 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 we need to announce this because we need something for some reason? Because it's like, again, we know that we're supposed to still be getting a sub with a bunch of solar, you know, or sailors. Yeah. And fear that then tells that story, but then I don't think that's ever going to come. Uh, the thing that I liked is what you said when JDM said, the news came out of nowhere. It was such a huge pivot. They had season 11 all mapped out where they're going to go, and suddenly it became, we also have to close the story. So, like I said, it yeah. just seems like that they're big for, for, for pivots. <laughs> so, yes, let's let's talk about that fear news. Yes. All right. Well, so the trailer for uh, 7B ends with Madison Clark. So we get to actually see her. And she doesn't look all that great either. But um, so besides the whole like impending war between Negan and Alicia or not Negan, uh, uh, Strand. Strand and Alicia. And then, you know, everybody else. There's lots of explosions. There's lots of stuff going on. It actually looks pretty decent in the action pretty good yeah so i'm kind of like okay like you know we got through the whole you know atomic pinto you know (laughs) span to get into into like hey is this gonna be like fun you know and like entertaining i still have very fond feelings about the apocalypse thank you very much (laughs) i liked it too it's just uh, hopefully we'll see more of it then um, but anyway, so the trailer after all its stuff ends with Madison Car- Clark somewhere, in, um, like in kind of a dark area, and there's a voice over a speaker asking her name. So she says Madison, but then the voice says, "Not anymore. We will tell you who you're going to be from now on." Dun dun dun. So, yes, all of you Madison fans can go ahead and rejoice, but the question remains, where is she and who's got her? Yes. And what sinister group is lurking in the (laughs) shadows to challenge our heroes in the return of fear? Yes. We know know Strand is there, and we know Alicia's people, and we've seen these other stripper guys— but are they Teddy people? They seem to have a pretty nice bunker. Yeah, that's my thought too. Was like that, just that scene. Like, where, when was that? You know, it's like, was this before, after? You know, it's, and it had a very, very Teddy like feel to it. So, yep. Will they tell us where she's been all this time? Is this a flashback? Right. Or, or as I have opined for many, many an episode, was she really hiding in the concession stand eating <laughs> hot dogs and turnips? Uh, I hope they tell us. The answer to these and many other questions will be revealed in April, in the beginning of Fear yes. the Walking Dead. And when, that's the other thing. Was that like the very last you know, scene or the last episode? Like, are we going to get... We'll see... 
I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It would be a real dick move for them if they wait till like <laughs> episode 14. We finally get our big Madison reveal. I mean, it is, it is fear. <laughs> well, it is fear. I mean, we can't, we can't, we can't discount the fear factor on that one. Yeah. Oh, we shall see. But it is great to see her face. So I am excited. Well, and like like we have said, it was despite anybody's shock and amazement of what came out, it was really cool the fact that they put out, you know, those that early uh poster screen art, whatever, for we are we we are gonna find out about the Carol and Daryl show. We are gonna get our uh Maggie Negan team up in New York and Madison Clark has come back. So it looks like it may be a good year for for the TWD universe. Mm -hmm. And like I said, maybe they'll give us our submarine. (laughs) Finally. (laughs) Maybe they'll actually give us, oh, I don't know, Rick Grimes, perhaps. Yep. Because I'll still go back to my original thing. There were there were Andrew Lincoln sightings in Atlanta. Yep. No, that's for sure. So I mean, we will we will see. I mean, I we still have. I think I think we have like two or three more episodes before the next break. I can't remember. Yep. Um. So I'm not expecting to see Rick Grimes anytime soon. But when it does, well, the, but they still have what. How many? How many is uh, the segment three? Is it like six episodes, eight episodes? Um, wasn't this supposed to be like twenty-four episodes long? Yep. So, so we don't know. Yeah, we're in just episode like four. No, thirteen and four. There's. Two more episodes that I see on uh, Wikipedia. Right. And I believe that's when the break is on March 27th will be the last episode for this break. But I don't right. know when it jumps back in. But yeah, so what's that? Well, that's 14. So that's going to be like, if there's 24 episodes, then that's like another 10 more episodes. That would seem. Yep. Then we've got a lot more coming then. They have, to go back to my old well-worn airport analogy, we have lots of runway for them to tie everything up and bring bring the Walking Dead to a nice, safe, gentle landing. Let's hope they do. All right. As opposed, as opposed to, um, if I put my other geek hat on, as opposed to what Star Trek keeps doing to me, and you know, making their landing quick and abrupt like a Marine fighter pilot on a pitching carrier deck. Uh, All right. Well, do you want to take us out and tell people how to interact with us? I shall. We want to encourage you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's at walking dead TTM to submit your theories and feedback. Most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group. That's facebook.com slash groups slash walking dead TTM. If you'd like, you can send us email. That's walking dead at talkthroughmedia.com. You can also use the feedback forum on our website. That's talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback. If you'd like to leave us voicemail, you can call us at 216 232 6146. Remember, those voicemails are only two minutes long. Also, all of our new episodes are on YouTube. Just search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when we have new videos. Those videos go out first before the podcast. To support us, like and review the Talk Through Media Facebook page. You can find that at facebook.com slash talkthroughmedia. And as always, the best way you can support us is in our Patreon. Uh, you can find that at patreon.com slash walk. Dead talk through, and we would like to thank our Patreon supporters Clint McCall, Renee Murray, Dieta Patterson, 
guy over there, Lawrence Todd. Hello. <laughs> and me, Kyle McAdams. Remember that Dieta, Clint, and Renee will be getting an early version of this episode this week. Uh, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or your podcast client of choice. And while you're there, give us a rating or review. You can also leave us a review at podchaser.com. And there you can actually rate individual episodes or the whole podcast. And as always, remember to share our posts on Facebook and Twitter when we post them. Or tell a friend. Word of, the, word of mouth is the best way to get us new listeners. All right. The next, um, I'll, so I'll go into this, the whole, you know, like Brian usually talks about like what you know other ways you can listen to us um or to them and uh brian and ruthie they're covering the finale of star trek discovery and picard but those are going to be delayed um when they come out while brian is moving and so he's moved but he's still not quite set up (laughs) and so i mean i know some of the episodes are still delayed i don't even think they've released a picard episode yet but uh, you can find more information about that at the website at StarTrekPicard.com or you can go to the Facebook group, which is at Facebook.com slash groups slash Star Trek TTM podcast. Um, I believe they will be getting, uh, I believe the first, I don't know if they've recorded the first Picard yet, but they're- well, they should be, they should be catching up soon. Yes. And I'd like to go ahead and say, and remember, you can also listen to uh, Kim and James do the Rebinge at DS9 podcast, which is going strong. And you can leave feedback for them and find out what they're up to in the same Facebook group. Facebook.com slash po- groups slash Star Trek TTM podcasts <laughs> with an S. <laughs> <laughs> And there is a Patreon for those podcasts, and you can find that at patreon.com slash Brian and Ruthie. So, next week's episode, Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 13, Warlords. It's going to be written by Jim Barnes and Eric Mountain, directed by Lauren Iaconelli. And the description from AMC Plus says, Maggie, Lydia, and Elijah help a stranger from another community. Hmm. Interesting. Another community. <laughs> yes, another community. <laughs> Whichever one that is. So I guess we'll wait and see. So until next time, I'm LT. And I'm Kyle. And this is the Walking Dead Talk Through. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.